everyone can get a headhunter, no matter if you have a full-time job or nine children. Okay, maybe not that many children, unless you got that gamer aim. <laughs> I'm Daniel, I've been playing Path of Exile for way too many hours, and over the past few leagues, I found a way to get a headhunter consistently. My strategy is probably obvious to some, but maybe not to some newcomers to Path of Exile. Starting off with what a headhunter even is. You know, what, what, what is this thing? Headhunter is an extremely rare, unique belt. It's so stupidly rare, you could play thousands of hours and not even see it. Now, why do people want it? Well, it has one important modifier, which reads, when you kill a rare monster, you gain its modifiers for 60 seconds. Rare monsters have modifiers on them, which make them more powerful and quite dangerous. These modifiers can be seen if you hover over them. With a headhunter, you steal every single modifier and power yourself up. It's like me in the morning taking three espresso shots and thinking I could conquer the world. And, you know, a few minutes later, I crash and burn. There are many modifiers on monsters in the game, roughly 60, but you generally have around 15 up to 40, depending on the endgame content you run. In short, you become very powerful and very tanky in a short amount of time, thanks to this one unique item. That's why everyone wants it. A glass cannon build, which, you know, has all the damage, but no defense whatsoever, could slap this one item on and suddenly survive quite well until the player runs out of headhunter buffs. But as long as you kill lots of rare monsters, you can, you know, gain more headhunter buffs or refresh the ones you have and life is good. So now you know that headhunter is super rare, what it does and how it's used, but how do you get it? Headhunter can drop everywhere. It is in the core drop pool, so it's not unique to one type of content. It's not like a unique item drop or reward from defeating a boss a thousand times. Still, here are a few specific ways to get the belt. First off, divination cards. Some maps in the endgame have specific divination cards or also called div cards associated with them. That means if you want to farm one specific card, it makes sense to play those maps. When it comes to Headhunter, three cards come to mind. The patient, the nurse, and the doctor. There are many more divination cards that might get you a headhunter, but those three are a very direct way of getting it. Just farm a bunch of them and you'll have it. But if farming divination cards isn't your thing, because you'll need like 512 patient cards, kind of cringe, <laughs> you could also spam ancient orbs many times. Ancient Orbs turns a unique item into another unique item of the same item class. Getting a headhunter this way is kind of brute forcing it, but it should work, even though it's also extremely rare. If you like clicking on a bunch of leather belts, feel free to do this. A different way would be gambling. No, not like cryptocurrency garbage gambling. I'm talking about Gwenon from Expedition. Buying a leather belt has a chance to become a unique belt. There are many other unique leather belts, so the chance of receiving a headhunter is also very rare. There are many more options to get a headhunter, but which strategy did I use to get a headhunter? None of the above, because I don't like them. Now, this is not to say you can't have fun with this strategy, but they're just not for me. What's fun to me is running the type of league content and build I enjoy for many, many hours. As said before, it's about having fun and not clicking thousands of ancient orbs. Speaking of enjoyment, what build did I use to get my headhunter now? It's not only about the strategy that I'll explain in a bit, but also the build. A bad build can make a strategy much slower and thus worse. So my go-to build for the past leagues Surprise, surprise, Tornado Shot that Eye. <laughs> I know some of you rolled their eyes, I understand. Tornado Shot is a very meta build, but it took me many leagues to find it or try it out. It's definitely not a just played and it works kind of build. You need some knowledge and currency to get started. Starting off with Tornado Shot isn't really good because you need some proper items to make it work. But Val Lightning Arrow will get you there fairly easily 
as of right now in the game. On top of a great skill, you also get Deadeye, which is the greatest tendency. You got Tailwind that makes you faster than other builds, so you can run more maps in a shorter time. Then your location on the skill tree allows you to get spell suppression fairly easily, which has a chance to have the incoming spell damage, giving you more defense. And then you have instant leech and evasion to round things off. Now, this is not to say this build is tanky. You will get one shot once in a while, depending on what you run. So finally, we got the build. Now, time for the strategy, right? Well, not yet, because I want to mention something that relates to this build or any other build potentially. Headhunter can feel bad. Now, what do I mean with this? Headhunter gives you many modifiers from monsters, but some of them may not benefit your build or could even harm it. So your build choice is extremely important because if you want to play with Headhunter, keep in mind that after all this farming and grinding, you might not even be able to take full advantage of this very expensive, unique belt. Back to Tornado Shot. Well, first of all, it's fun. Okay, that's very subjective, but objectively you gain extra projectiles from the headhunter buff and that just makes it so much better and stronger. It also deletes your frames per second, but we don't talk about that. <laughs> Other builds like Ethereal Knives Ignite can't really take advantage of headhunter. At least I couldn't. My ignites weren't much stronger nor does it really matter throwing a bunch more projectiles because the projectiles themselves don't do a lot of damage. So keep this in mind when you decide for a build and want to get a headhunter. The build you really enjoy might not be much better with it. With all of this, I hope I helped you in the right direction when it comes to deciding a build. What's left is to actually farm the belt. So let's finally talk about the strategy that I used to get my headhunter. It is Legion, but more fun than tedious. Legion is a league mechanic that lets you spawn two opposing armies in your map. What you want to focus on is a map that is very open, so it can spawn a lot of rare monsters and war chests on the edge. Dunes is a great map for that. Other option would be Jungle Valley with Searing Exarch influence, Strand because of its simple layout, or Cemetery for the Brothers Gift Divination card. In addition to Legion, you can add whatever the heck you want. But what I always focus on in my strategies is how much currency can I make with the bare minimum investment and still make profit. And Legion is exactly that. I don't want to run these super juiced mega maps that cost dozens of divines and hopefully get currency back. This is way too risky, usually requires a party or an uber strong build, then you need to trade for 30 minutes back and forth with a bunch of people. It's like, God, I already dislike talking about it. So not for me. Back to my strategy. Legion makes you profit because of the war chests. The chests with fancy looking icons above them. You can get divine orbs fairly easily that way. Additionally, you get a few stack decks and incubators. Diviner incubators give you even more stack decks, ornate incubators give you even more divine orbs, and skittering incubators give you scarabs. The other incubators are not worth my time, and are hidden on my filter, but maybe you want to pick them up. What about the splinters, right? Legion drops those splinters from enemies and legion bosses. That's also up to you if you want to pick those up or have them on your filter, but I haven't had them on my filter for probably two years now. I don't see them and I only pick up the emblems that drop every few maps. Again, it's about fun for me not to min-max profit here. If it's fun for you to pick up splinters, Go for it. Again, I'm not suggesting you to have such an aggressive filter, but I still make profit without picking all this stuff up. So keep that in mind. You can pick up way more than I do, make way more profit, but you probably then take one minute longer per map. So keep that in mind. What I do pick up is a Delirium Orb. Those are real nice, especially if you sell them in bulk. I'll talk about that in a bit. Another thing I can throw in here before this video bloats to about half an hour is the Eldritch influence you are running. Searing Exarch in Jungle Valley is preferred due to the boss not spawning, so you can blindly spam the minion node and get a lot of loot that way. Keep in mind, you'll be clicking a lot more loot, which also slows down your map. If you are more into big drops, choosing E12 Worlds can result in a Divine Altar. Still, 
you have to read the alters each time it pops up because if the minion option doesn't say divines you usually go for the player option because it will result in giving you more item quantity and rarity. So keep that in mind when you start farming your headhunter. I also know I'm throwing a lot of information at you and it will probably take you, you know, a few runs to get into it. But I'm still not done yet. There is a bit more because how do you even get legion in your map? It can spawn randomly but we want to force it so every map we run makes us profit. That's why we use scarabs. Even though it's all about fun I had to accept some tedious tasks to get me to my headhunter. So the big topic for running legion but also selling a lot of items is bulk trading. Let's start off with buying our scarabs. I usually go with gilded legion polished ambush, polished reliquary and polished divination scarabs. This is very likely not perfect and can probably be improved and usually the more you throw in per map the more you get out. Still all those gilded scarabs cost a lot more and I feel a little bit uncomfortable doing that. If you just yolo it and just buy all gilded feel free to do so but always check how much profit you make which we'll talk about in a bit. Now bulk buying those alone is a few divines so a cheaper option is just using a gilded legion scarab and then any sacrifice fragments. Don't use the same fragment multiple times though as this won't give you additional item quantity. Now imagine you do all of this finally run your 50 legion maps however long that takes for you and you actually see profit. Looking at your stash, you got a few more divines than you started with, but you probably have even more than you think. Of course, you can use Excellence CE, a great third party tool, to see how much currency you have. But it's not liquidated, meaning it's not all divines and probably a bunch of other stuff. Back to bulk trading and selling all this stuff so you can finally get those sweet divine orbs. First of all, your stack decks. They alone make you big profit and bring in a constant flow of divines. So set them up in a premium tab or even quad tab like I do and set the price. Incubators can be sold or used. I recommend using the diviners and ornate ones but if you don't care you can just do the same strat with the incubators and wait for someone to message you. Deli orbs is the next one on the list. I usually set the entire tab to a specific price and just wait. Certain deli orbs might be worth more so set those up individually. And back to the simulacrum splinters, if you're okay picking up a bunch of simulacrum splinters you might even get a few simulacrums going which can sell for a decent price in bulk as well. You can also bulk sell maps but I'm not gonna go into that. I think you have already like way too many infos. <laughs> So this is where I'll stop now. You can always optimize something in PoE, min-max every little thing, but as long as you, you know, follow this rough guide, you should be fine. If you think I missed something, let me know in the comments down below and I might make a follow-up on this next leak. But seriously, if you're still here, thank you. I'll make another video in the future about how to make additional profit to this headhunter strategy, so subscribe. You know, gotta do the YouTuber stuff. All right, I will go now. Stay hydrated, gamers.